Hey there, White DPC. Crafty Piping, back after a long hiatus. Uh, I said I was going to make a video this weekend, and then I got busy. Um, drove back from North Carolina from uh, factory training Friday night. Got back late. Um, ended up having to pick up the dogs uh, from the mother-in-laws and the little one uh, Saturday. So ended up Sunday being a get all the yard work done day. So <laughs> didn't get to make the video, but here I am Monday making my uh, ketchup video. Uh, as you see, I'm not smoking a pipe yet. So what this video is going to be is just kind of going over some of the stuff I uh, picked up while I was down in North Carolina. Um, I can't remember her name. She's a newer YouTuber. I want to say it's Carolina Rose. Uh, she recommended me to stop at McCranny's uh, Pipe Shop out by Charlotte. I ended up not making it. It was a 45-minute drive uh, from where I was staying at. So I ended up not going there. Uh, I was in the company truck, so I didn't want to push my luck too much. Uh, but Parsimonious Piper recommended that I stop out at the Pipe and Pint. Drink some water. So I stopped out there, picked up a coffee cup because can never have too many coffee cups, and uh, I found some goodies. Uh, the most exciting thing I picked up was my first Savinelli, and it is a Savinelli 207 camouflage. And man, I love that stem. So now the story goes with this is. My local pipe shop, well, local to me, uh, the Pipe Rack in Akron, um, they have similar pipes to this with the camouflage uh, pattern stem, but they're all bent pipes. And I'm starting, uh, unless it's a system pipe, I lean away from bent pipes. So when I found this for a fair price, I had to pick it up. So I don't know how much it's going to really show. Apparently, it's not going to want to work with me here. But it's just a nice sandblast, dark finish. Uh, I smoked a few bowls out of it already. But I just, I love that stem. Uh, I do have the included adapter in. I don't use filters, so it just made sense. But man, it's just a perfect fit. So that was from the pipe and pint. So while I was there, I also picked up a couple tins of uh, tobacco that I wanted to try. Um, I like pick up tins locally, uh, especially for travel. So the first one I picked up that I've been eyeballing online a lot was uh, Peterson's uh, Perfect Plug 3Ps. Uh, I, I just want to try it. I really want to see what a true plug is. I've had, uh, the only other plug I've tried to this point is GLP's Geometry, which watching videos it doesn't look like it's as dense of a plug this is like a hard packed brick <laughs> of tobacco uh, so I picked up one tin of this as well as my first Seattle pipe club uh, blend I picked up uh, Seattle oh wow that, you can't barely see that but it's uh, Seattle pipe club down yonder which is like a stove Brazilian Virginia um, fermented and it's in a crumble I believe it's like a crumble flake or a crumble crumble cake. Uh, so I'm excited to try that. It'll be my first uh, Seattle Pipe Club. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I also picked up a couple, uh, well, a pack of Alec Bradley cigars while I was out um, at a uh, vape shop, smoke shop that actually took decent care of their cigars, but they also had a whole tub of Carter Hall. That's the last one. Um, now, this is the Dominican Republic made, so this isn't the roll and stuff. This is newer. But my the tobacco shop closest to me only has the tubs of Prince Albert. So I wanted to try the brother to Prince Albert, which is Carter Hall, which I've had a few pot, uh, bowls of this already. And, man, it's like... So if Prince Albert is the more aromatic of Codra Burleys for, for between the two, 
Prince Albert, you can definitely pick up a lot of like the coffee or in the uh, I don't say coffee uh, chocolate notes. Um, but with Carter Hall, uh, I think I'm picking up a little bit of like a like a liquor, like a whiskey type topping. So what I was going to do is just kind of talk about uh, my week um, down in North Carolina and me getting back uh, while I pack my pipe here. Um, so yeah, I uh, went down, we drove down Sunday, got down there about mm, four o'clock with traffic and everything. Um, went out to dinner and had uh, sushi. Uh, for me, uh, the missus got, uh, I forget what she got, some kind of like a hibachi type stir fry. And then class started Monday. Uh, this class was going over like the variable speed drive Ingersoll RAN compressors, uh, which I, I knew a good bit about, but like the troubleshooting the drive stuff I wanted to learn. So I definitely wanted to go to factory school to learn that. And it was a good learning experience. So the class went from Monday to Friday. Test was Friday. Uh, passed my test. So I'm now certified to work on them. Not that I wasn't working on them before. But uh, give me one second here to get my pipe going. But needless to say, I haven't really been able to keep up too much with uh, a lot of the YouTubers. Uh, the pipe presenters just been busy uh, focusing on school, making sure I'm learning, studying while I was down there, as well as just trying to find time to relax um, as best I could while I was down there. So while I was down there, though, I, it, it came to my realization that people are a lot nicer down there, more talkative down North Carolina than back here in Ohio. Just seemed like everybody at the hotel uh, was more friendly, more willing to start up a conversation. Got a couple comments about smoking my corn cobs. When I was there, people kind of commented and said, that's different. One guy said he's never seen a, another guy smoking a pipe. He thought that was just something that the people back in the old days did. So now there's still plenty of pipe smokers out there that's just harder to find. But uh, the one thing I will say <laughs> that was uh, not the greatest highlight of my trip was it basically rain almost every day down there? Um, we only had maybe two good days, but I didn't get a whole lot of uh, smoking done. Uh, smoked a couple, or I smoked one cigar while I was down there, and then one on the way back, and uh, it, I kind of dispersed in some pipes, mostly smoking what I had in the work truck, which currently has been uh, Super Value Cherry Cavendish. It's been good. It's a, it's definitely a cheap cherry aromatic. It's no cup, Colt, Blood Red Room, Blood Red Moon, uh, <laughs> but it's good. I mean, for the price, you can't beat it. You get like a fourteen or twelve or fourteen ounce bag for like twenty bucks. <sighs> but uh, I want to say we went down to the pipe and pint Wednesday was the day I stopped over there out in Winston-Salem. I mean, the gentleman there was so nice. Um, not a great big store. Uh, they have a, some house blends, a lot of bulks, um, a few tins. That's why I was picking up because, like I said, I just didn't have a good way to store the uh, bulk blends that they had uh, on my trip back. So I just picked up a couple tins while I was there. But they had some nice pipes. They had some great big meerschaums, uh, which I thought about getting until... <laughs> it's just, I don't know, a, a Meerschaum pipe traveling from North Carolina to Ohio in my work truck, I don't think it would end well. So definitely happy I went with the uh, Savinelli. So I do have one other pipe technically made by Savinelli. It's my Rossi. And it's just, 
the fit and finish is night and day difference. But I think I want to dedicate this pipe here to uh, Virginia's. I, I just, I'm a Virginia guy. I'm playing around with Englishes now, but I'm definitely a Virginia guy through and through. Vapors, especially. Virginia Burleys, stuff like that. But man, this Carter Hall, this. This might replace my Prince Albert as my uh, favorite codger blend. And I was reading online that they think they say there's Virginia in... It's primarily Burley, but with some Virginia to add some sweetness. And it's good. I mean, you can tell. Like I said, if Prince Albert is like definitely the more aromatic of the two, but I would not call it an aromatic. Just as a quick little plug here for Team Freedom, but yeah, it's just it was a it was a good 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 uh, class. Learned a lot. Uh, didn't break anything, so that's a always a plus. Then, like I said, Saturday I was busy picking up all the little ones, and Sunday I was busy doing yard work because, man, I was gone. My, my yard just fucking exploded. Excuse my language. It exploded. <laughs> it was just grass, super tall, so I, I had to do something with it. I'm currently also fighting the uh, Battle of the Morning Glories. Trying to figure out how to get rid of them without killing. Uh, we we put four lilac bushes in our front uh, flower beds because when we bought the house uh, five years ago, we had these giant overgrown shrubs, and we within the first year tore those out, and we replaced them with these lilac bushes. Well, I didn't realize it at the time until after the fact that our flower beds. At some point, somebody had planted morning glories, which they're they're pretty flowers. But the problem is, man, once you have morning glories, the vines just grow on everything, and they grow all over, and they're just suffocating these lilac bushes. I think I got one that's officially dead. I think I haven't seen anything come out of it this year, so I think it's done. And I've tried pulling them. I'm afraid to spray anything like Roundup or anything out there because. I don't want to kill lilac like bushes if I can't help it. But everything I've been reading it says you, they're a pain to, to get rid of. And I've tried the the tarping with mulch on top and everything after you pull them. It just never helps. Or it'll help for a time. But like a month later, you'll start seeing the vines creeping back through that tarping. So if anybody's got any good tips on how to get rid of morning glory vines, please let me know. Because I can't keep up with them this year. But, yeah, I wish I would have been able to make it to McCranny's, but, or McCranny's, however you pronounce it. But it just didn't end up happening. Like I said, it was about a 45-minute drive, and I already had a long drive home. And I didn't want to add another hour and a half to it on top of actually going to the shop. So, yeah. It was a good trip, though. Uh, met some couple guys from California, a guy from Canada, another guy from Alabama. They were all in the class with me. But yeah, about it before I keep rambling on, but that's how my last week, week and a half's been. It's good to be home. It's good to be back on the white TPC, catching up on all your guys' videos. As they 
friendly reminder for anybody who's made it this far in the video. Uh, I'm at 85 subscribers now, and I already announced that my I'm going to do a 100 sub giveaway for, I couldn't remember the name of it, but it's Phantom Privateer Crumble Cake Number 6 by Sutliff. It was a limited edition, uh, and it's barrel-aged series number 6. And I have this one, I have two tins, I have one downstairs, and then this one. Hey, sorry guys. I uh, just found out my microphone died right at the end of recording. So yeah, I got two tins of the Phantom Privateer. One's downstairs, one here for the giveaway. All you got to do is make a video talking about your favorite pipe shape. Um, and then one week after I hit 100 subs, we'll be doing the giveaway. So if you want to put in for the giveaway for the Phantom Privateer, Tag me in a video, mention me in the comments, whatever, and uh, make a video about your favorite pipe shapes. Just got to talk about it. You ain't got to show nothing if you're busy. I get it. So on that note, we're going to cut this video off here. Uh, hopefully the mic didn't die a second time on me. And uh, cheers.